Continuing in chapter 4, we looked at systems of equations and inequalities with two variables. How about if we have three variables? Well, it's a similar process, but a tad more complex. Here are the objectives. Pretty straightforward. And let's go on to checking now whether we have a solution with uh, an x, y, and z. Now, what we see here is the general formula. Again, you want to put them in standard form. And let's take a look at an example now. Example one, determining whether an ordered triple satisfies the system. So there is our ordered triple, and this would be x, y, and z. So you might say, well, how do you do it? Well, it's kind of obvious that you're going to replace the x's with a negative 1, the y with a negative 4, and the z with a 5. So there are the equations, and you can take them one at a time. And there's step one, the, the equation. There's the replacement. And it's just basically arithmetic here. And since 22 equals 22, the first one is true. And following that same protocol for the second equation, and again, you have to be careful of copying it correctly, putting in the values, use of parentheses, and we end up with another true statement. And in the third equation, again, replacing, and we end up with a third true statement. Now, the question is, what is this like? Well, we know with uh, two lines, this is a point of intersection. And then you're having some third point, a different line, also intersect at that point. So this is a point in sort of three dimensions where they all intersect. Here they go over in some detail, and you can pause and read it. But in essence, what they're saying is you're going to take the three equations in standard form and then look at them and see if you could take two of the equations and eliminate one of the letters. Then take the other two and eliminate a letter until eventually you solve for one of the variables. Then you take that value, put it back into one of the equations, solve for the second variable, similar to as we used with just two variables, and then take those two values, put it in that third equation, and solve for the last variable. And we'll see this in action. So as we look at example two here, there are three equations in standard form. And we've looked at this equation and this equation and saw that if we added these two up, the z's would cancel out, which is what they've done here. These add out, and we now have an equation with just two variables. Now, again, looking at those that you can work with, and there's more than one way to do this, but now if we look at that first equation, 
and this equation here we have a negative c and here we have a positive 2z if we want to get rid of the z's from these equations i would multiply this one by a 2 so 2x 8y minus 2z is what they've done here. And now the z's cancel out. And I'm left with this equation with only two variables. So that'll take us to our next step. This takes careful study and careful checking work and now we end up with these systems of just two variables and if we multiply this bottom equation by a negative one it will change all of these signs which we see here and there the x's cancel out and we end up with y now equals 4. So in our set of ordered triplets here, our y value is going to be 4. So what do we do next? Well, we have a value for y. So we can go to this equation that we had and substitute for the y. We then solve and end up with x equals 1 following the algebra. Now that we know a value for x and y, how are we going to find what z is? Well, you're going to go to one of these equations substitute these two values and then solve for the third the z let's see it in action here and there they've used that top equation x is one y is four substituting get a one plus 16 is 17 minus z uh, you could subtract now 17 from both sides, get a negative z equals 3. You want to solve for a positive z. So you divide both sides or multiply both sides by a negative 1, reverses the sign, and we get z now is a negative 3. Now, the next stage is to see if these three sets of numbers solve all the equations, and that would be the check. And you see in the top equation, it's true. And the second equation, again, through substitution, is true. And in the third equation, it's true. So the solution set 1, 4, negative 3 is a solution for this. Now, in doing your own example, this is going to take time. Uh, it may not be done exactly this way. Again, sometimes you can choose other things to do, but this is the protocol for doing it. And I might add that there are some calculators that can be programmed to solve equations with three variables, as well as, of course, the two variables. But this would be the manual algebraic way of solving them. All right, let's go on now to example four, which would be an application.
looking at this example, we see that find the quadratic function. Remember, this can be substituted here with the function symbol, the y, and whose graph passes through this point this point and this point. These are ordered pairs. So what is the protocol? Well, it says we begin by substituting each ordered pair into this equation. So we write the equation three times and then taking our first one here where x is a 1 and y is a 4. So y is a 4, and x is a 1. And then the second equation, x is a 2, y is a 1. So there, y is a 1, x is a 2. And then the third equation, x is a 3, y is a 4. So there's the 4, and we're substituting the 3. Now, we then end up with our equation then as 4 equals 1 squared is 1. So this is just a, an A. This is just a 1B and a 1C. Okay, substituting that first set of values, we end up with this. In the second equation, x is 2, we square it, we get 4, 4a, 2bc. There's our second equation. And the same for the third x was a 3 that we squared. We got a 9. And we have this. Now, to find a, b, and c, we form a system of these equations to solve the system. We'll see that in the next slide. Now, we set them up. And notice that if we use this first and second equation, if we were to multiply this equation here by a negative 1, that would reverse all these signs, and the letter C's would cancel out. And we'd end up then with a negative 3A minus B equals 3. Aha. So we have a negative 3a minus b equals 3. We have an equation now with just two variables. Continuing, if we go to this equation and the third equation, again, multiplying this equation by a negative 1, it gives us a value here of negative c, and then the c's will cancel out here. So now we're left with a negative 8a minus 2b equals 0. And just projecting here a little, can you see if we multiply this top one by a negative 2b. That would be one possibility. Uh, a negative 2 would make this a positive 2b, and these would cancel out. And let's see what they're going to do. And I didn't peek, but I see this is what they're doing. So they're multiplying this top equation by a negative 2 so that this b here becomes a positive 2b. And of course, you're doing each term 
So this becomes now a positive 6a, a positive 2b, and a negative 6. Notice all the places where you're not, if you're not careful with the signs, you could make a little error. And now the b's cancel out. So you get then that negative 2a equals a negative 6. Divide both sides by a negative 2, and we now have our a value as a positive 3. All right, moving on. Going back now to one of the other equations that we had, we know that our a value is a 3 right there. So this gives us a negative 9 minus b equals 3. We're going to add 9 to both sides. We get a 12. So a negative b equals 12. So a positive b equals a negative 12. So, so far we have, let's write it up here, a equal 3, and b now equals a negative 12. Going back to our initial equations, we now have two values, an a and a b, that we're going to put into one of the equations, and this looks like the easiest one here. So a is 3, b is a negative 12, and then we don't know what c is. So this comes when we do the addition to a negative 9, plus c equals 4. Transpose that negative 9 gives us c is a 13 now. Bringing this now all together, we had our original equation, but we now have a value for A, a value for B, and a value for C. So our A value is going to be 3. Our B value is going to be a negative 12. And our C value is 13. And there is the solution of our problem. And again, any of these you know are going to take a long time. And any one little error, you can see where accuracy is so important in checking your work. All right, we'll wrap this up. And just as a little addendum here, I went to an online graphing calculator. So there is the equation we came up with that went through these particular points and ask this calculator to graph it, which it did. And there's our first point, 0, 4, right there, 2, 1, right there, and 3, 4, right there. We have a nice parabola and, in a sense, proof of the pudding. All right, now we'll wrap it up.